Hello everyone, my name is Joshua Clark and I have chosen to have my topic on the filmmaker Alfred Hitchcock and more specifically his use of cinematography and what made him such an iconic director that is still remembered to this day. I will start off my presentation by going over a brief history on Alfred Hitchcock in terms of how he got his start. He actually didn't get a start as a director, which you'll hear in a second. And then I'll transition into his specific use of cinematography and the styles and direction he did use to make his style so iconic. And let's begin the presentation. Alfred Hitchcock is a famous director known for his art and visual storytelling, close-up images, and suspense. He was born on August the 13th in 1899 he was a screenwriter, film producer, editor, and director. Alfred directed more than 50 films, which made, him be which made him become one of the most popular and influential directors in film history, and won him about 67 nominations and 32 awards. Wow. He was a perfect auteur in the making. His films were known for having a lot of suspense, which kept the audience glued to their screens. Alfred actually started his career in 1919 as a title card designer, you know, not as a director as we know him today. And his first dic uh, director directorial debut was titled The Pleasure Garden, which was released back in 1925. After publishing his first thriller titled The Lodger, A Story of the London Fog in 1927, two years after, he started to gain a little bit of celebrity. His other films, including Black Mail, released in 1929, The 39 Steps, released in 1935, and The Lady Vanishes, released in 1938, gained him even more popularity in America. In 1939, he was officially pronounced filmmaker and producer and was seen by audiences as a director. His films are mainly of suspense and crime genres, but also include a little bit of comedy and melodrama. He has set a path for other directors with his iconic work. Some of the scenes that show his brilliant work include the scene from The Birds in 1963. Now this scene begins with a close-up shot of a well-dressed blonde woman with makeup. This is a naturalistic mise-en-scene setting as the events are actually what happens in real life. From the background view, we can see that it is in a restaurant. The camera, however, transitions to a medium shot of a smiling middle-aged man in the foreground and a well-dressed woman in the, in the background approaches. These camera settings enable us to see the character's emotions, which is very powerful. The camera pauses on the mother. It is a close-up shot, and we can see a change in sentiment. This shows the ill motives the mother has for the relationship of the couple. It is also shown that the mother changed her facial expression in a close-up shot when the lady greeted her. Now let's talk about Vertigo one of Hitchcock's most famous, well-known films, and the one that we did watch as part of our coursework. And one, you know, obviously one of his, one of my favorite films by him and highly regarded as well. In the film Vertigo, it starts off with an introduction of a scene with starting and establishing a shot of a well-dressed blonde with some men engaging in conversations in the background. From the background view, we can see that there was a social event going on. It is then followed up by a close-up shot of the woman, which this creates an immediate intimacy in our surroundings. Now, what separates Hitchcock from the rest of the directors, especially during his time, is that he further uses light and shadow to make his scenes more menacing, which was very and still very uncommon among many directors. In this way, when he does this, um, he brings out personality of each of the characters. Kim Novak's character in the film is a mystery. It's very accentuated by lights and the position of the camera. It makes her seem a bit more elusive and a bit more interesting as well. From James Stewart's point of view, Hitchcock only allows us to see what he is seeing. In the film Shadow of a Doubt from 1943, Uncle Charlie is also shown in a close-up shot with his face one-sided. 
Now the repetition of visual motifs is evident where Charlie and his uncle are introduced by similar imagery. In Charlie's scene, we see him lying asleep in bed in a clean two shot as a man opens a door. Now to further explain this in the film Psycho from 1960, Marion, just before her death, looks up at a big house. Another character is also seen doing that in another scene. In Psycho, the scene opens with a view of city rooftops. The camera panning slowly from left to right across a very specific location with tall buildings, the date, the name, and the time of the city appear on the screen. That date and time is read Phoenix, Arizona, Friday, December the 11th, 2.43 p.m. Then the camera pans toward one of the buildings with a few more inserted shots and then moves towards the open window. It is then seeking out the open window through which it has entered a darkened room. Now looking at the flow of events, we can see there is evidence of a significant pattern in Alfred Hitchcock's narrative style. The insistent moving of the camera and zooming shots address the change from a normal, quote unquote, normal city to an abnormal, shady, anxiety driven love between two free, two unfree people, but also two lovers. In Alfred Hitchcock's film Strangers on the Train from 1951, there's a scene that particularly stands out to me. It begins with a medium close up shot of a smiling middle aged woman with glasses. This shot transitions into a close-up, then an extreme close-up shot detailing those ladies' glasses. This shot shows how the woman is reminded of a girl she murdered. Alfred Hitchcock's genius also uses a high angle which creates tension. For instance, in the movie Topaz from 1969, where a character is shot at a high angle to show his deceptiveness, and in The Man We Knew Too Much from 1956, where a couple is being threatened. Another scene where Alfred Hitchcock does wonders with the camera is in a scene that involves the theft of a key in The Notorious from 1946. It begins with a wide shot of Alicia walking in with a black dress. Black is the color of darkness, which implies impending danger. A close-up shot follows it to show emotional change and a point of view shot showing the key. A crowd shot of the venue is taken at a high angle, again using that high, high angle that Hitchcock loves using to show people's movements and later moves down to an extreme close-up shot of the key in Alicia's hand. In, the, in another sequence, the husband moves to the basement and we see a close-up of the keys. He, realized one is, he realizes one is missing. When he gets the key and goes to the wine cellar, we get an extended shot that moves to the close-up of a broken piece of wine bottle. A high angle turns into a close-up shot of him going up the stairs. When he tells his mom, we get the most extreme close-up of the movie, high angle ever shown. As we can see, there is a pattern. Hitchcock increases the suspense level in his films by playfully having the camera roam around, looking for something or someone suspicious. This makes the audience more engaged as they feel involved in solving the mystery. Now a little bit about the actors that Hitchcock used. While the most famous blondes of that era never did appear in Hitchcock's movies, there is no denying that his female leads were pretty much attractive in their own right. Like most female leads, they were attractive, but in Hitchcock's films, the difference was it was in a very subtle way, a subtle way which combined fashion with fetishism. Make no mistake, these scenes were carefully thought out and systematically carried through. What Hitchcock does is that he mixes the protagonist and the antagonist and uses lighting to differentiate them, framing shots to increase anxiety and the camera movements to mimic a person's gaze and the framing shots to ma maximize anxiety. Alfred Hitchcock's choice of wide shots to close-up shots is a masterful skill that enables conveying the plot and emotions. He uses overhead shots to pull out. What makes Alfred Hitchcock such a legend and such a pioneer of his directing style 
which inspired so many to this day, is his ability to convey his message without resorting to explanatory dialogue. It was his brilliant camera movement and his extravagant suspense techniques which told the story. Thank you.